Uh, I would now like to invite Dr. Sunil Bhardwaj, who is presently working as a senior analytics consultant, education with SAS India. He is certified SAS data scientist. He has a total of 16 years of experience, including 10 years of training and mentoring experience in SAS with all the leading clients in India and abroad. He has conducted mentoring workshops in the area of business forecasting, predictive modeling, big data analytics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning for various corporations in the areas of banking, retail, and manufacturing. He has more than 15 publications in the area of analytics and quantitative techniques in national and international journals. Dr. Sunil Bhardwaj. Uh, thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for uh, inviting me. Uh, my camera has a problem, so I cannot share the video, but hopefully my voice is reaching you loud and clear. Yes, yes, your voice is visible. Wait, wait. So I think uh, it's, uh, already we have crossed for 20 something. So let me just quickly wrap uh, my presentation. I leave you with some basic ideas, uh, some good trends, some bad trends kind of a thing. So let me share my screen quickly. And just give me a minute. Well, so hopefully my screen is visible. Yes. Okay, yes, great. Yes. So, so let me quickly talk about, see, we have been uh, used to rather, I would say, looking at these kind of trends, which is whether it is big data or ML or AI, seems to be all exponentially growing. And uh, whether it is Forbes or Accenture, or you can find a great number of reports, all of them indicating, you know, I would say a steep increase or almost an exponential increase in any terms related to, let's say, data science. And, you know, uh, one of the key things that was worrying was in between, you know, something like COVID happened. And likewise, you know, the good news is uh, supported by many of the research work or the reports that are already available to be uh, read in the market. For example, one of them, uh, which is related to our area, is future impact of COVID 19 on global big data analytics industry. Of course, you know, they have taken quite a huge sample size, they have done a lot of study, they have created multiple scenarios, but one of, uh, uh, I would say, one of the conservative scenarios they have, at least uh, that is also pretty hopeful. What, what they believe is that by the end of 2021, whatever impact might have come onto, uh, let's say, the industry we call big data analytics industry would be gone, and all the trends that we used to see would essentially be uh, the same. There might be sluggishness, there might be, you know, uh, I would say delay of investments that might happen. Uh, we have seen uh, within our SaaS as well uh, that some of, you know, the revenue has to be deferred uh, because the client said, that, you know, you might want to take up a few things a little later while the impact of COVID is minimized. Well, so what it all means is uh, by the time I think this batch comes out uh, into the job market, uh, all will be good news, so we'll be recovering. So a lot of uh, results that has been, or uh, the trends that we have been seeing, already have been you know, promising, whether it's all about the big data investment worldwide happening across uh, the corporations, or let's say the machine learning trends, uh, anything with respect to whether it is hardware, software, or services related to machine learning, all are showing promising trends. And hopefully so, uh, by the end of this year and 2021, we would be again skyrocketing. So what it all means basically is more jobs for the students. So that's uh, good news. And the trends also, you know, I was just looking at some of you know the trends. Uh, I was doing some kind of you know, trend analysis on the postings of the Indeed, Not Three Monsters. So I'll share some of the things that I've got with me. Uh, so th that's the good part. And again, uh, whether COVID or no COVID, once again, you know, uh, the AI usage and the trends uh, that would be there in terms of AI spending, whether it is Asia Pacific or worldwide. So I could grab on some of uh, these trends, which are largely done during this COVID period itself. And again, the projections are quite healthy and we will see more and more usage of AI and ML going forward. So, so, so these are some of, you know, the good news I thought, you know, uh, I would share. And accordingly, you know, uh, when it comes to uh, the job market, so whether it is, you know, uh, McKinsey's study or any other study, we do have healthy numbers all the while. And in fact, 
the numbers are as good as as they were you know in the pre covid times and all the projections are uh, with few exception there and there they stand to be true so so in, in the long run you know this area is to stay and is to grow even while covid covid times you know there were a lot of studies done uh, for example what are the best job profiles in united states in 2020 uh, this was done uh, somewhere around uh may or june june it was published so it was must have been done in march uh, period again you know the some of the best jobs uh, that appears in the top five bracket you know you would see three things over there the computer vision the machine learning and uh, the data science itself so if that's the trend typically in the united states more or less you know uh, in india we have almost every mnc every startup catering to one way or the other uh, either the united states market or the european market or within india itself we do have a lot of uh, things getting replicated so i would say again you know it's a good news similarly you know uh, a lot of in study that how you know the machine learning salaries have been in india and year after year the average salary and the median salary have been growing and for the 2020 also it has gone up so obviously you know it's a collection of uh, machine learning jobs that are posted on the job portals and from there you know the values are picked up uh, typically the sample size for these kind of jobs is somewhere between 5000 10000 so hopefully by next year also it will increase so these are all the trends i think from uh, the job uh, market seems to be very very promising so all probably uh, our students need just to be ready without any worries of uh, let's say you know the pandemic and the make impacting them in one way or the other uh, in fact report after report most of them are done during the covid period uh, one of the reports uh, that was done by statista in uh, september 15 2020 a very healthy projection for bi and analytics software application it's growing the usual way whether the covid was there or not there and many many of those things and uh, some of the things that uh, students were on sas so again there was a study done by the pay scale and then they have studied and analyzed eight scales and out of those eight scales you know sas was going to be the number one scale that can give a pay boost so i'll come to that and few more things but uh, we need to understand that you know all that data science and job market india has all the strong reasons uh, and there are multiple waves in india which supports uh, why there should be so many jobs so all all the foreign companies uh, you can say it is bc city back center the list is so huge that they have their analytic centers in india indian businesses themselves obviously whether it is icic to hdfc to pantalon again the list is so long they have all started their analytic practices departments or in one form or the other they're gearing up and the analytic initiatives are on increase within the indian businesses as well as the third way for the jobs obviously would be the movement uh let's call it bpa to kpo and within that a lot of uh, companies like infosys with pro tcs cognizant which were more like into uh, services maintenance system integrators they also have a lot of uh, analytics based projects now being won worldwide so all of it is good so i was looking at some of you know the data so i'll go one by one about these graphs again uh this is based on uh, a uh, certain kind of sample size uh, the sample size was collected just before the covid from march 2020 after that we didn't do that but this is reflective of you know what has been happening in india uh, where the most of these analytics jobs are so banking seems to be uh, the largest and once again banking should not be confused with let's say only financial kind of analytics it includes all the other things so you know bank has a marketing function hr function and what not Uh, likewise you know its pharma again you know all the clinical thing and a lot of uh, uh, drug data analytics or analysis clinical trial data analysis happening in india a lot of jobs in pharma and likewise every sector has to play its own role but uh, this uh, graph is based on the nokri monster job postings we analyzed around 2500 jobs uh, since uh, i'm from saas so these are all saas related jobs i would say but definitely it's data science and analytics Uh, the reflection of that uh results might be skewed in a bit in the sense if we consider more technology uh, this could be because as also has most of its clientele in banking that's the largest uh, share bfsi where sas is there so might be the results are slightly uh, might be slightly skewed if we consider all the technologies put together but nevertheless 
that's the picture. Uh, similarly, a few more things uh, let me share. Uh, what kind of you know job roles are there? And, and that's very, very you know uh, confusing. Of course, one of the good things is that uh, the variety of jobs exist, even with let's say the analytics or the data science market. The titles they ask for they change from analytics manager to project managers, and then within analyst and consultant, there is a variety. We just try to consolidate a few things. Uh, the jobs are also available at VP director level, but the percentages are left. Uh, the use of word data scientist, we saw it has been increasing. So maybe earlier somebody was called senior consultant, they're now simply labeling it as data scientist. So the problem here is these jobs, uh, what we have seen, and again, I, I would uh, uh, suggest students that they have to be very, very careful when they're reading a typical job description or a profile. First of all, I don't know who writes them, they're like they're asking for moon. So if it is technology, they'll write in one line everything our Python says C Java. If they're asking uh, uh, for what they should do, be doing, they would write everything for the entire analytics life cycle, starting from data management. Uh, you should know best of the uh, language of do and big data or no QL. You should know best of the algorithm in the world. You should also apply it. And also, you should be able to deliver on the time. And it might be one company calls this as an analyst, other might call it consultant, and yet the same description might be called as data scientist. So unlike, let's say, you know, I've done my CA, I know what a CA does or what an accountant does. Or likewise, if I've done my MBA marketing, I know, okay, what marketing or sales is. This area is hazy and probably would remain hazy. So we should deal with the job descriptions with a bit caution when we are applying. And uh, there is no, I think, if you look at it, in some companies, uh, maybe analysts are earning more uh, than a data scientist or probably a VP also, for example, analysts at Google might be earning as good as managers or VP elsewhere. So uh, I would say there are no rules here when it comes to the titles and the job descriptions. So one must be cautious of these when they're applying in the open market. A few other things. Uh, jobs, uh, large, the large concentration, I would say the three analytical hubs, uh, Bangalore, Delhi and CR, almost more than 35%. Delhi and CR, everything put together, go down for the year, what is it? Mumbai, largely, uh, so, uh, the, the third largest job market, financial analytics to an extent, uh, but again, we have other kinds of jobs in Navi Mumbai, etc. All the other cities, you know, they're in single digit, at least that's, that is what uh, uh, so we found. So maybe if you're looking for a full-time job, you might have to shift to either of these uh, three cities, Bangalore, Delhi, NCR, or Mumbai. Generally, uh, different different headings, different, different parts. Still, you know, uh, the uh, larger number of chunk, job, chunk of jobs came from financial analytics and marketing analytics. Uh, risk analytics was somehow listed separately from the financial analytics. So we have just taken up how the categorization happened on those job portals, but nevertheless, uh, supply chain, telecom, retail, healthcare, insurance, they have their own share of uh, job market. But it looks like marketing and finance, these two are, including risk, so let's put it this way. These three will constitute a maximum of uh, jobs. You know, more than 50% of the jobs, or, or let's say close to 60% of the jobs are from these three areas and rest distributed across. Well, so these are some of the things, and again, you know, uh, when it comes to the job market, see, uh, uh, there's a whole change that is coming up when it comes. So I just, I can give you a small example. So let's say, you know, we are a product company, we sell SaaS, we have our own list of clients, etc. obviously, so uh, those are using SaaS, so those could be the potential employers. But at the same time, see, we also have to work with companies like TCS, Infosys, as these are our SI partners. We also work, and there are uh, people for data science in KPMG, PwC, as th those are our consulting partners. Similarly, Accenture, Wipro, uh, they are also their IBM, HP are hardware partners, and the, the different job areas. So th there could be jobs in the business intelligence, financial intelligence, risk management, and, and many, many more areas are there. So th when analytics starts to pick up, let's say in an economy like India, there would be several, several avenues of the job. And I'm just not talking even about the startups here, which is once again, if I, I should be right in saying that after US, China, India is the hot pad for startups, which are associated with the data science. So once again, a lot of opportunities within India. And uh, uh, before I close, I'll just give you a few quick bites where you might want to focus and find things interesting. Uh, typically, uh, internally, what we have felt 
the computer vision uh, worldwide, there is a trend to adopt these kind of technologies using deep learning algorithms. So previous presenters have talked about uh, different, different examples where all the computer vision could be used. So whether it is uh, supply chain management, product identification, categorization, or self-driving cars when it comes to safety and maintenance, uh, defect detection, manufacturing, medical image analysis, or with the security systems with facial recognition. A lot of these things are being used. And likewise, you know, there are proven case studies and benefits that how computer vision can uh, help to spot defects, let's say, in a manufacturing setup and how the efficiencies and time reduction in the process can be gained. Likewise, uh, whether it is crop disease detection uh, using satellite imagery. Again, you know, a lot of work uh, has been done within India also. There are startups, uh, there are government initiatives. Uh, I believe there are scholarships also available uh, if you could, you know, deliver and compete and then, you know, showcase your results to uh, government agencies that how, you know, whether it is for forecasting or for crop disease prediction. Already, you know, we have just analyzed the U.S. market, you know, the four billion almost loss happens, uh, loss happens just in the orange market because of crop disease and we're working in the U.S. around uh, providing computer vision solutions there. Similarly, several areas, uh, like the, uh, cancer detection and all the previous speaker was talking about that. And here also, uh, I'm not uh, getting the right link, but if you search on the internet, you'll get, I think Indian Medical Association is promoting and inviting interested uh, people where they will provide the financial support. And, you know, uh, they're also financing R&D into this area where the research scholars can work and provide their inputs. Likewise, we have whether it is about you know leak detection and then you know uh, saving and cutting down the cost onto that, the preventive maintenance of pipes, or let's say you know the phase recognition, which is much talked about uh, for computer vision. So there are lots and lots of interesting avenues where we see a flurry of things happening. You have set suite of tools and technologies. You have people, government, non-government, uh, startups, uh, established companies trying to have their share in this particular growing market. So that, that's a promising area, I would say. So uh, one more example here uh, about you know, uh, the insurance uh, detection. So one of, uh, this is one of the approaches where you, know, uh, you can do a photographic analysis of the whole car, and then you, know, you compare it with previous past images, and then try to figure it out whether it's a real damage or this is a staged or a fake damage. And then you, know, you can use that input to see whether overall claim is fraudulent or not. It's a huge market, uh, losses in insurance because of fraud. They run into huge numbers. And again, if applications can be created to cut down, uh, that will be great. So a lot of these things. And a few things uh, uh, before I close, uh, there are a lot of carrier myths that happen. And quite often, you know, uh, when we either recruit or talk to the students, uh, these are some bullet points I'll just share. First of all, you know, uh, data science, if you have entered, Please remember, it won't happen that you stick to one kind of tool, one kind of technology or a technique forever. It's like not like that you've done the done your CA and end of the story, you don't need to do a second CA or a third CA or, or, or you know, don't do a degree after degree. Uh, well, maybe for CAs or that, they're also changing, by the way. But if you're in the field of data science, be ready. There won't be gonna one single job or single uh, technique or tool that would remain forever. You have to be very, very flexible and keep on learning once again whatever you choose in this area this is fast changing area more and new applications keeps on coming up you call them new applications new theory new techniques or new languages whatever uh, they're not lifelong you have to be on the toes to keep on learning that and one more thing you know typically uh, when we were also young you know okay let's do this course because there is job let's end up there uh, but this kind of an approach in the short term, it might work, but then one should more be rather looking at the basic skill building and adaptability and flexibility to making changes. That should be the more focus rather than, you know, simply doing a course and quickly jumping into uh, a job uh, that, 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 that satisfies your financial needs for a time being, but then, you know, uh, it's difficult to sustain it long if you're not interested in that. So, so uh, uh, the sum of the idea. Uh, so uh, I'll just simply say, follow your interest. That is one thing. And again, 
uh, focus on skills, applications, and the outcomes rather than you know, focusing more on the technology or, or the technique. So, so it's like you know, uh, if you know astronomy, then only it matters what brand of telescope you have. You have a Hubble Space Telescope or a Pocket Telescope. Now, all these tools, technologies are simply telescopes. If you do not know astronomy, then, then you can't even use the telescope. Maybe you will look into neighbors how what she is doing, but that's not the good thing. So, so the main idea is the skill and the applications are more important. Tools, technologies, uh, they are just a matter of convenience that what tool and technology fit for the purpose. I'm not denying the importance, uh, but the basic criteria, you should be brave enough. Then if you're ready to fight with your enemy, then it matters whether you are going to use a machine gun or a tank or a missile. But if you do not have the basic feeling and courage to defend yourself or attack your enemy, no weapon can help you. So tools and techniques are merely weapons. They do matter provided you have the first thing that is the courage and defend yourself if you talk in uh, the defense terms. So these are things and I'll leave you with some thoughts and uh, for example, uh, every curriculum that I've seen talks about the three basic skills, the data management, the algorithms, the business visualization. But uh, I want you to throw some ideas at you. For example, uh, pro managing a project for delivering analytical solutions. Uh, so project management is yet another. How to communicate, uh, previous uh, speakers have talked about how to communicate your findings to non-analytical people. How to do that? Leadership. These three, four skills uh, essentially, I would request the school or college to maybe have some courses around them or some experience uh, given to the students that might help. And finally, every industry uses uh, data science in one way or the other. There are different shades, different degrees of usage. So one must be open uh, to work across different industries. It's not that, you know, uh, why agriculture, you know, nobody uses that. It's not the case. In I open the areas you see uh, are essentially the opportunities. Especially, uh, this matrix needs to be recreated for the Indian market. This was just by McKinsey, a global way to look at where all things are. So, uh, just see what kind of industries and what kind of needs or problem types in India uh, we can deploy. And that's where you have opportunities for startup, new services, etc. And finally, you know, I, I, I'll start with just giving you an idea that the whole learning that you do around. Uh, maybe you learn a particular technique or a subject, they might look like separate islands, but one must understand that they belong to one single uh, analytics life cycle for solving the problem. You start with the data and end with the solution, and whatever happens, happens in between. So solution and the timely delivery should not be forgotten. In between, all the skill sets are necessary. So that approach should be there whenever you learn a technique or a skill, where does it fit in analytical life cycle, how does it help, and likewise, what's the overall benefit of a skill that you're learning in the college or let's say in the internship, uh, that's how you can develop further. So I'll stop here and thanks for your time and uh, let me stop presenting. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> Sneha? Hello. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Sunil. Uh, now I would like to move on and uh, I would like to invite Mr. Subhanshu Gupta, who is working at Citibank Singapore. Uh, he works as a machine learning engineer at Citibank Singapore in its advanced analytics team. He pursued his master's in data science with specialization in consumer mm -hmm. analytics from National University of Singapore. His professional interests include data science, business analytics, product management, tech, design thinking, and startup. Outside of work, he contributes in the startup and the community by volunteering to teach coding to kids in the code in the community organization. He also mentors students and early age professional in the guidance related to career progression and university application for masters. Mr. Subhanshu Gupta. Hi, thanks Neha for the introduction. 
Um, a lot of interesting points have already been shared in this platform. Um, what I'm thinking to do right now is to share some of the use cases, some of the projects that I am working uh, in City, um, and some of the tips uh, going forward for students who wish to uh, take a head start in this domain. So um, I'll share some of the projects that I'm doing right now. Right. So, uh, so one of the flagship projects uh, uh, that my team is working on is identifying PII data sensitivity. So uh, you know that PII or personal identifiable information is a very sensitive thing um, in any industry, uh, especially in banking and finance. Uh, there are a lot of regulatory and compliances um, that uh, any institution has to follow, uh, failing which there are um, repercussions in millions of dollars. So an exposure of even a single PII field uh, can cost uh, the bank a lot more money and regulatory scrutiny. So um, the, the use case is uh, something like uh, we have to identify um, some of the columns in our data warehouse, which can potentially be PII, but might have been marked as non-PIIs. Uh, but the machine learning solution was to build a robust framework which identifies and masks PII data using natural language processing, um, using um, text encoding techniques, um, using classification models. Um, so this is one of the project that I'm working on. Then um, I also work with internal stakeholders, wherein um, for the internal infrastructure of city. So let's say you use the mobile app, uh, use the website. There are several other services. Um, so let's say in India's context, let's say any transaction, if you buy something from Amazon and check out using uh, city's uh, payment gateway. So that too is considered as something uh, city's infrastructure. So one of those projects in which I'm working is to uh, predict the outages, anomaly detection, infrastructure capacity forecasting. So these three heavy phrases that I have ju just used are individual big projects on their own. The idea of sharing uh, these projects is um, or the, these is to share the use cases right now, right? Uh, one of the things that when I started uh, uh, learning machine learning is uh, the information fatigue uh, due to the plethora of articles and courses available online, right? But um, thanks to the fact that uh, my uh, alma mater has started this uh, course um, and I went through the, the uh, the course curriculum as well. Um, besides that, one of those tips that I would want to share that have already been shared, but uh, I would like to add is go out and seek interesting use cases, which would help you augment your learning, the academic learning. Uh, now, how do you find interesting use cases? One of the speakers mentioned Kaggle, which is a great website. Um, other suggestion was to participate in hackathons. Uh, both fantastic uh, suggestions. One of the other avenue that has helped me personally uh, to grow a lot is joining meetup groups. So there's a website called Meetup. Um, I can share with you uh, one of the group called uh, Data Kind. So it's an international group that collaborates with global NGOs and help them solve their pain points. So uh, use cases such as uh, predicting when the water is going to dry out in ground wells in Tanzania, or uh, detecting diseases and crops using satellite imagery, um, using computer vision. Um, right. My point here is um, once you find a use case uh, which piques your interest, uh, there are ample opportunities for there you uh, for out there for you to pursue and hone your skills. Um, the beautiful aspect of this is that you can pick up a project at any stage of its life cycle. Um, you can learn how a project is ideated. How do you visualize the data? Uh, one of the most important aspect is the art of storytelling, uh, which a lot of you, uh, the lot of industry practitioners uh, and the speakers who are here have mentioned 
uh, in their talks and so these things you'll realize when you go out in the industry that you have to convince uh, your stakeholders you have to convey what you're doing a lot of the time the stakeholders um, don't understand um, uh, the so let's say your logistic regression output or um, uh, deep learning models output they wouldn't understand and it's very natural but when you convey your results when you convey your insights via uh, great visualizations um, great dashboards uh, that's when you are uh, conveying a story of uh, what's the pain point how your analysis solves that pain point and what are you doing to uh, solve that pain point and how your insights will help your client or your company to solve that pain point so the these are very important aspects uh, according to me um, that has helped me personally uh, grow in my career and yeah uh, i would like to uh, i won't take much of your time uh, except the fact that uh, uh, the foundation of uh, DA has uh, so I was in a batch of 2011 to 15 and I then went on to pursue my masters after working in India for about three years in software engineering domain uh, um, did uh, uh, some of the work in uh, research in big data and then eventually all of this the foundation helped me in uh, exploring the uh, field of machine learning and data science and um, the exposure that DA gave me um, has been super instrumental. Uh, would like to, would be glad to take any questions from the students later on as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Subhanshu. Uh, so now we have our valued alumni, Vaibhavi Desai. Uh, she is working at Gojek, Singapore. Vaibhavi describes herself as an explorer, learner, and leader. She currently runs the data and d, &D program across Southeast Asia. Previously, she was worked, uh, working at Google focusing uh, on scaling a computer science and machine learning education program and growing women in tech communities across India and Southeast Asia. Outside of her work, Vaibhavi is a global shaper at the Singapore hub of the World Economic Forum community. She focuses on initiatives around enabling domestic helpers and women in the workforce across Singapore. Vaibhavi is also a professional Kathak dancer, learning and performing arts with uh, Apsara's Arts Academy in Singapore. Vaibhavi. Um, thank you so much for the introduction, uh, Ms. Seha. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for the invitation uh, to be present here. It's always a great pleasure when it comes to uh, talking back to the students of DI City. Um, I am from the batch 2011 to 15 VTech ICT. Uh, and yeah, have been spending a good amount of time in India and Singapore after I graduated. Uh, so I'm again uh, going to keep it brief so that we have more time for questions. I really want to hear from the students as well. Uh, and I'm going to share a few things uh, that I have been working on and maybe also provide some suggestions to the students uh, who are present here. Uh, so my journey with machine learning, data science uh, started again uh, while I was in VTech. Uh, we were given opportunities uh, to take subjects that was offered to MTech. So I, I was lucky to be a part of uh, the subjects like information retrieval. And I had an early exposure uh, uh, with the help of the professors at DIICT to basically publish research papers and present at the national conferences across India as well. Uh, Post that, I spent a good amount of time, uh, as you heard in my introduction, uh, building and scaling programs around machine learning and computer science education. So my role was basically, uh, how do I put together a curriculum where uh, it blends the theory into practice by providing the tools and technology that Google has to offer? Uh, so I ran programs around across 200 uh, colleges across India and scaled it to about 10,000 students. So I really have, I am passionate about working with students and bringing ML machine learning education program to the students. Um, post that, I was also running machine learning boot camps for Google, where we focused on beyond students, we focused on enterprises um, and the 
startups across Southeast Asia and other regions. So that gave me an exposure to understand uh, what kind of skills do people in industry need, even after spending a few years in the industry, uh, what kind of reskilling or upskilling that we need to do once people are into the workforce and basically trying to change the role or change the domain that they are working on. Right now, um, I work at Gojek. Uh, so Gojek uh, is an Indonesian company. Uh, we have a presence across Southeast Asia. Uh, Gojek is Indonesia's first and fastest growing unicorn. Uh, recently become a decacon, uh, valued for over 10 billion. Uh, it's a very unique uh, application. I'm just spending some more time to explain about this application because it's not there in the Indian market. Uh, it's worth knowing about it. Uh, so it's a combination of uh, Zometo, Danzo, Paytm, Swiggy, uh, all in one. Uh, so we have about 18 products in one app, one super app. So you can imagine the complexity of the data and the problems that we would have to solve for one super app. Um, the products would range uh, from transport to ordering the food, uh, commute, uh, digital payments, shopping, hyperlocal delivery, um, massages, uh, anything and everything that you can think about that removes the friction from your daily lives. Uh, and all of this has one single app. Uh, we have presence over Indonesia, uh, a lot of Southeast Asia country beyond Indonesia, Vietnam, Philippines, Singapore, Malaysia as well. And I'm working uh, with the data team. So I will now explain a bit about uh, the kind of problems that I'm solving with the data team. So I work with a lot of data scientists, uh, data engineers, uh, data analysts, and a lot of people who work along uh, the embedded uh, data teams. Um, my role is one, to make sure our data warehouse is set up uh, with the right set of layers and the access, uh, access permissions. Uh, and basically, the data is accessed in a manner that people can consume it. So that is one, having the data warehouse set up for all the 18 products. Once this data is set up, the other role is uh, I work with the data engineering teams uh, and basically the data analysts to make sure that we have the tools built in order to access th this data, tools, pipelines, and all the things that is needed. And the third part of the, the program I'm running is once we have the data uh, sorted out, we have the tools sorted out, enabling uh, the users who are not into the domain of data to use data. So this is a very challenging uh, activity or, or the program because it involves a lot of change management. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to reduce the workload and bandwidth of our data scientists and data analysts so that they could spend time into doing more high value and high impact work. And at the same time, we can enable the whole of the organization uh, to reduce their dependencies for the ad hoc stuff on the data and are able to do the data related stuff, the crunching, the accessing, visualization stuff on their own. So it's a very unique change management where my role basically uh, involves working a lot with the data team, but beyond them also with the product engineering research and the business teams. So I'll just talk about a few use cases. Uh, Shubhan should talk about use cases. I also heard a lot of other speakers talking about it. So I'm just going to give you a few use cases, which could give you uh, an idea what kind of problems uh, we are working at uh, at Gojek. So this is, uh, as I said, uh, a mixture of a lot of apps, super app kind of a thing. So one of the important problems that our data science teams have been working on is cross-selling the products uh, and basically coming up with the matchmaking algorithm. Uh, so it is very important that when someone is using the food product, uh, you grab their attention to also book the transport. And if someone is doing the transport, you also grab their attention to book a massage. So how do you give those kind of uh, recommendations and make sure that you are cross selling your own products on one platform? So this is one, pla uh, one problem that I've seen people working up on. Another very interesting problem is um, so Gojek, when, when we started, we started as a ride hailing for two wheelers, like the four wheelers come quite later on. So with the two wheelers, we have a screen attached on the back of the two wheelers in Indonesia, uh, which is used to do the ads. So another very interesting problem that our data science team was trying to solve was 
how many impressions uh, do they get on the ads that are being basically displayed over there on the screen and this is important because we need to get more business we need to get more ads and we need to show the impact of uh, the impressions uh, that is being spread using these screens so there was a lot of image processing and modeling involved uh, in this problem as well and a very interesting uh, classic data science problem um other than that uh, i think uh, you all will be able to relate um, the routing algorithms uh, finding out the fake rides uh, and basically detecting the fake users those all are also um, kind of interesting problems a very interesting thing and a very important thing we are focusing this year is personalization um, as we all know with all of these uh, hyper local app personalization is the key to make sure that the user sticks with your app and do not moves to the other app because they find interesting suggestions there so recommendations personalizations uh, on each and every page of the application is also something that our data science teams are working on so yeah i think these are just some some insights um, we have a big office in bangalore uh, bangalore is the main tech office for gojek so you might have come across it uh, uh, if if your colleagues or friends have been working there uh, but yeah uh, it's it's just uh, that we don't have the product but we do have a big office in bangalore uh, i'll uh, i'll now come to the last part of uh, my session which is uh, just want to give couple of suggestions on uh, things you can do uh, i think the speakers here have included really good recommendations on uh, things you can do while searching the jobs things you can do while uh, studying the curriculum uh, and how can you explore the extra new tools and libraries i'm just going to add a few more things there uh, echoing a lot of speakers play with data as much as you can play with the data that is available and accessible i remember while we were starting up in this domain we did not have so much data available uh, that you have right now after i would say like 5 to 6 years uh, we've seen the government opening up their data we've seen uh, companies like google uh, opening up the data of the videos the images the text whatever you need uh, kaggle obviously is there as a big platform as well so make use of this data and basically play around um, try to create your own projects uh, try to create small presentations around it try to present it to your uh, colleagues small groups or small meetups or conferences uh, so i used to manage the community programs at google previously and i i i felt i was uh, benefited a lot out of the community experience uh, amdabad gandhinagar uh, is a great place uh, when it comes to the tech communities in the past few years uh, i i believe we have Uh, pretty much caught up uh, in the pace along with the metro cities as well um, like amdabad is considered as one of the good tech cities so pick up uh, pick up the communities that you see around there are a lot of machine learning communities a lot of data science communities um, just go uh, and hear what people have to say uh, that is a great place for you to network uh, a lot of times you will end up finding good jobs and good opportunities to work on projects out of such communities and meetups uh, so make the best use of it Uh, if you feel comfortable uh, with these communities structure then i would say go a step beyond and uh, try to give uh, a talk or a session uh, at such community sessions uh, or the and going forward the conferences as well uh, because a lot of times like you will be studying definitely you will be applying for jobs but what kind of things that make you stand apart is what additional things that you are doing whether you're working on a research project on your own or whether you are public speaking at such conferences the network uh, I, i repeat again and again that the network that these things bring along and the connections uh, that they will bring along would be of enormous help uh, i remember while i was at dict as well my community was restricted to people in da and maybe going forward i i did interact with a few people as a part of google summer of code where we were doing the open source work and so on and so forth but i couldn't meet them because we were all situated across the globe but you can go beyond your college and in the same city meet the like minded professionals uh, who are working in top notch companies and machine learning data science roles uh, it, it would be really nice to get that exposure um so yeah uh, i think that's about it a very last point and a very interesting uh, because i i work a lot on diversity and inclusion as well i really feel that uh, an edge you can get again uh, 
over all of these uh, topics and when you step up and basically start your journey in industry is also by having an exposure to machine learning ethics and fairness uh, as much as we are all into uh, building great data models and the recommendation systems and the prediction engines it is important that our models are not biased our models are fair enough uh, and they are not missing out on any important use cases uh, so there's a lot of literature out there around machine learning uh, fairness google has a lot of resources around that as well uh, please do uh, see see that if if you find that interested i think that is again another topic you can pick up to uh, present at conferences etc because people don't know about this a lot yet uh, and there has been awareness in the tech companies so if you go to a good tech company you will hear about these things but most of the uh, rest of the part of the world these things are picking up now we also heard about the explainable ai uh, so i think those things are really uh, the hot trending topics uh, so as much as you are making sure that your foundations and your basics are clear you also have to catch up with the trends uh, that is uh, going around in the industry um, so yeah that's that's about it from my side um i'll just stop here and uh, hand it over back to uh, ms neha thank you so much thank you bhavi bhavi thanks a lot thank you bhavi bhavi uh, all the speakers have given a lot insight in uh, into this domain and uh, now i believe the student will have a lot of questions to ask and uh, i would open this uh, session to question and answer and the student can ask the uh, questions that they have uh hello uh, uh so the, my question is for uh, deepak sir so the first, first question is like uh, if you are getting lots of data in terms of gbs in uh, using lots of sensors and cameras do you have to use some kind of gpu acceleration for it hello yes yes sir uh yes uh, so uh, what we do is we do some uh, uh, processing which is being done uh, at the car level and then when it is being uploaded uh, then we have to uh, we get the data the data will be in some format it can be a dat file okay and then the dat file is being converted to a parquet file and then uh, after the parquet conversion only then only we run the analysis so this is uh, this is the idea right sir and sir uh, one more question is like if you are dealing with uh, uh, like you are you are spontaneously uh, checking like if if this line is there or if if uh, this longitude in this this meter of uh, chunk uh, the car is there so do you have to use kind some kind of operating system like linux for uh, to manage these resources uh no so we have our own uh, measurement system where all uh, all our sensors uh, sensor data every uh, operation every operation i mean uh, the the embedded device the embedded uh, the ecu uh, which is there so there can be hundreds of ecus so all are being interconnected and there is a measurement device and so the the way we log the data it's through this measurement device okay so uh so it can be yeah it can be a linux it can be anything so but it, this is something which is uh, uh, confidential i won't i won't i yes, cannot I disclose those so there uh, are there are something to yeah yes sure yeah so there yeah. are hundreds of ecus okay so and all all of these data are getting uh, uh, means uh, they are all interconnected okay and uh, when you see all these operations uh, so all these ecus ecus are allowed to operate uh in some certain millisecond okay even um, that that millisecond can be 20 can be 40 so all these operations should happen within that and if in that operation if uh, something uh is uh, uh, is not uh, is not uh, right then we log that so that is uh, one thing yeah yeah so uh, i just want to add something on top of it because uh, of my experience with the uh, autonomous industry as well so uh, coming to the first question uh, about acceleration so when you talk about the perception systems uh, specifically if these perception systems are uh, in l4 l5 or even in l3 cars you do need some kind of acceleration uh, precisely because 
uh, there are a lot of data related uh, issues uh, you have uh, you have gdpr laws uh, in that which uh, does not allow you to actually transfer a lot of data back to the servers so what happens is that we do a lot of processing uh, on the uh, on the uh, uh, on the car itself and we require some kind of uh, acceleration gpu accelerations are uh, eventually one of the ways of doing acceleration there are other ways as well uh, if you see uh, uh, recently nvidia and mercedes they came into a, a big collaboration right where uh, uh, where we provide a lot of uh, so we provide uh, the a compute platform which actually includes a specific uh, auto automotive standard specific uh, hardware as well as uh, the software stack that software stack includes uh, so in uh, so any uh, any specific uh, device which is safety critical or which is which uh, which is critical uh, of any functionality uh, which can have adverse effect to human life be it in healthcare be it in aerospace be it in automotive there are some uh, existing standards based on which you have to develop a particular algorithm or a software stack and a hardware stack on which the software is running so be uh, so in automotive uh, standard it is called as iso 26262 and on top of it uh, there is something called as acoc which is uh, 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 a safety element out of context which gives us certain rules or constraints under which we need to develop these software one such uh, constraint uh, is applied on uh, the operating system and the hypervisor which is managing uh, that on the hardware as well and uh, uh, to my knowledge, uh, one of the uh, operating system which actually uh, has those capabilities in uh, uh, or has those restrictions in, by, in, in them is uh, an operating system uh, called as QNX. Linux, unfortunately, right now there is no ASIL compliance of Linux available, but there are a lot of uh, uh, Linux based uh, operating system like Yocto. Uh, uh then uh, there are different uh, communities who are trying to bring up uh, a newer uh, newer and newer versions of uh, linux uh, uh, based operating system which are uh, uh, automotive compliant but as of now uh, as far as i know uh, qnx is the operating system which actually has those uh, 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 features and constraint uh, uh, already there in the uh, uh, in the operating system and widely being used in uh, automotive. Does that answer your question? Absolutely, sir. Thank you. Okay, great. Mm, hello, sir. Uh, my first question is for uh, Deepak, sir. Uh, we like I asked in a chat about uh, level five, four and level five. So uh, you told uh, in that previously that uh, we are removing brain in level four and uh, we are removing driver in level five. So basically, uh, you told again that uh, in level five we don't have any steering wheel. So uh, uh, what my understanding got to uh, up to that point is that uh, we have both auto and manual supported in level four, and there is only autopilot in uh, level five. So is that correct assumption? Okay, so you're talking about uh, this autopilot. This Tesla autopilot is a uh, level two, and if you want to take the difference between level four and level five. Uh, level four will be specific to a city and it will be specific to a uh, specific to a uh, certain highway it will be from a to b you cannot go from a to c it will be uh, between the two cities connecting to highways uh, so it's meant only for the driverless taxis okay uh, which is uh, currently running in some some of the u.s cities and level five is uh, driver is out of the context and uh, one question which uh, uh, which someone asked uh, about this, uh, so about the perception system, uh, I would say uh, what whatever processing is being done is being done on the car, okay? It's not that the raw data goes into the cloud. All the operations are being done, and if there is a log, 
then that log is also being transferred. If there is an error log or if uh, anything uh, which is erroneous, then that log data is also uh, getting into the cloud. So this is the way uh, we do it, okay? And uh, yeah. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Uh, my second question is for uh, Nagendra sir and Rahul sir. Like uh, when I look at my whole academic career, I can see a huge gap between this uh, field of data science and uh, marketing and sales. And uh, according to me, uh, like as I see the st uh, stage of market and uh, corporate world, I can see that uh, these two fields are like closely interconnected. So is there, a, is there is another layer of uh, communication between it or like uh, we will be taught uh, some marketing concept as well while we are in, the, in, in industries? Uh, I can take that question if uh, if it is okay. Uh, specifically yeah, sure. because, uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I'll just brief you about uh, the kind of work that I do. So I normally uh, work with various different customers. Uh, uh, so I work with Flipkart, I work with Mintra, uh, Swiggy uh, on their platforms. And my major work is to work with their team and uh, get their platforms uh, uh, get them the uh, acceleration that they require uh, or, or they have some SLAs, uh, say, uh, uh, say for example, uh, uh, different companies, they have, they build their software stack. Now they require to meet a particular uh, throughput and a latency. In those cases, acceleration is required. So uh, in those cases, uh, if they're using NVIDIA platform, then I come into the picture as a technical consultant where we uh, where, where we interact with the team and build it so uh, to a certain extent yes uh, so from my uh, kind of a role uh, and uh, and in general in many of the uh, roles which are similar where we often do uh, interaction with different type of customers you do not need to know the uh, uh, no uh, too, uh, too much of marketing stuffs and all, but you do need to uh, have a, uh, have a good communication where you can actually explain the uh, customers about your solutions, why you are coming up with the with that solution, what are the benefits, what are the uh, flaws, uh, and how you can make or how you can contribute in making the things a be uh, uh, things better. Uh, given uh, a particular uh, given a particular uh, problem statement right so you need to have that kind of interaction and this is something uh, which i really appreciate wherever we bringing up that uh, topic of networking which is extremely important for you to actually start uh, networking and gain these kind of expertise on how to uh, communicate your uh, problem or your solutions to somebody who may or may not know the things in depth but you need to communicate them that why uh, why you are doing something the way you are doing it so i think uh Vavavi's idea of networking and uh and i think uh Shubhanshu was coming uh Shubhanshu came up with the point of meetups and getting know, uh, knowing uh, the technologies uh, in and around you, interacting with them is a way in which you can actually learn this things. I'd be very happy if somebody else also pinch, uh, pitch in and uh, show their point of view as well. Okay, so any other questions from other uh, some other questions from students? Uh, yes, uh, I have a general question. Uh, so uh, as I went on to understand, uh, so after we build a model, we deploy the model, and then in between there is something known as like ML operations. So uh, does the industry expect uh, the ML operations role to be integrated with a data scientist role or that is a different area altogether. Hi, uh, I can take that question up. So, yeah, um, uh, as a part of my role, uh, so 
uh, these days roles are getting uh, much more refined uh, right so um, there are uh, phds who do core data science modeling work and glad that you brought this question up right uh, then there are uh, machine learning engineer the practitioners um, my role is somewhere in the intersection of build models as well as there's a whole uh, data engineering and machine learning uh, ops team the model ops team whose core job is that the uh, data science team would build the models and they would productionize them uh, so here um, the sres the uh, those who maintain the infrastructure their role also comes into the picture uh, but also there's a whole uh, stream of uh, roles that come into the picture wherein especially the one that you mentioned uh, machine learning ops um, this is a very important and emerging uh, role in this space um, wherein if i talk about the technologies that you can pick up uh, spark is primarily important um, you should, you can learn about kubernetes uh you can learn about it depends upon the industry how open or how close it is with respect to the open source uh, ecosystem and where do they deploy uh, but in general uh, this is a very good and emerging area wherein it's a good amalgam of um, machine learning data engineering and software engineering right so uh, go for it if uh, this uh, interests you um, yeah yeah any any counter question on what i said or if what i said that makes sense to you so it's a big area like it's not a small area anymore yeah, yeah, yeah definitely uh, there are huge teams whose core job is to productionize the models maintain those models uh, build streams that so you know um, there are different kind of models so let's say batch uh, models then the real time models so um, uh, ml ops person would uh, job would go increasingly complex if there's a real time streaming data and you have to let's say keep on retraining the model as well uh, right i'm speaking a little um, uh, uh, on a overarching uh, theme but my point is that it's a very uh, niche skill as well uh, wherein there are ample opportunities to solve um and ample avenues basically wherein you can uh, gain the specific skill sets of um how do you deploy the machine learning models how do you maintain them how do you keep on uh, retraining the models um yeah yeah and delivering thanks, them. yeah yeah that answers thanks sir thank you so if there is no other uh, question let me formally thank you a, a very thank from my uh, bottom of my, of my heart and i uh, really w wish that you know we can continue this thing maybe uh, in one semester at least once in a semester sometime as per your convenience uh, it could be on any one of the holidays with uh, i know it it will get into your <laughs> regular schedule uh, but you know if we can do that that will really really uh, create um, uh, a growing interest among the students you know so uh, vaskar it is your responsibility to make one uh, of this sort of a, a interconnect uh, uh, in, in one semester right they, because they will be yeah, there yeah, for okay yeah yeah I, and i think our placement team is very efficient in this matter uh, 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 we'll do it together uh, uh, you know, uh, stop here. You have to continue, and you yeah. have to see them become, uh, you know, our uh, adjunct faculties after some time. Right, sir. Right. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, finally, I will uh, put some conclusion notes here. So I, on behalf of DICT and the entire organizing committee, would like to thank all the speakers for conducting the session and sharing their valuable knowledge with the students. I hope uh, it's a good learning experience for all our students. I would like to thank uh, Director Sir, Professor Bhaskar, Professor Manik, and Sneha, our placement manager, for their efforts and cooperation. Without them, it would not, it would not have been possible to successfully complete this workshop. And uh, along with this, we expect a long-term association with our guest in near future. So thanks, everyone, for participating in this workshop. and. 
making it successful thank you so much thanks a lot and see you soon thank you okay thank you, thank you so much bye thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.